it's important that we train ourselves physically to control our appetite, right? If Isaac could control his appetite, he would not say his future for a bowl of soup. Because he couldn't control his appetite and, and uh, too much hunger. He just gave out his future like that. So it's important that you and I should be able to control our appetite. And to practice. The Bible says that practice alone, it helps you to have good rules in your life. In Colossians it says, the don'ts and do's, they are good because they regulate your daily life. Though that is not what takes you to heaven, but it says they are good because they help you be able to stay in this funny world in order. Hallelujah. Yesterday our prayer was God open our eyes. That was what we were praying yesterday, that God must open our eyes. And uh, today we are going to the next phase of that prayer because after God opens your eyes, what next? Hallelujah. It's not all about opening your eyes. After God opens your eyes and tells you this is what he wants you to do. What next? Uh, Proverbs 29 verse 25 is the scriptures of today. I want us to turn on to Proverbs 29 25. It says, The fear of man is a slave, and whosoever trusts in the Lord will be set securely on high. Hallelujah. The fear of man is a slave, but whosoever trusts in the Lord will be set securely on high. Hallelujah. After knowing what God wants you to do, the question is, what next? The book of James says that it's not all about knowing what to do. When you know what to do, what next? Everybody says there's God, there's God. The Bible says even the devil knows that there's God and the devil trembles when he hears the name of God. So knowing what to do is not enough. After God has told you that this is what you ought to do, what is your next action? Is it to know and stay? No, it's to take a step of faith towards that. And that is where most of us at times we have failed. It's not like we don't know what we have to do, but we have refused to do it because we do not think we're going to make it. Fear has kept us down. And what we're praying today is against the spirit of fear. That God make me a person of action. You might think that this thing of fear is a very small thing. No. When fear holds you, you can become sick. When you are afraid, you can become sick. And what it is about fear is that fear is not like there's no absence of opposition. Fear is not like there is no obstacles. It's your ability to overcome those things that makes it different. But I won't tell you that you don't have things that you'll be scared about in life. You have things that will scare you. The Bible says, when God finally told Moses that this is what you have to do, Moses started stammering. Moses started giving complaints. God, you know that I cannot talk. God said, is it not me who has given you mouth, Moses? He said, ah, but God sent somebody else now. Now the problem was not that he could not talk. When you are afraid, what you do is you give excuses. Anytime you start giving excuses of why you are unable to do something is the spirit of fear that is controlling you. Fear causes you to give excuses. And what does faith do? Faith causes you to see opportunities. When you are afraid, you only see excuses. You give one and the same excuse. You change it another way. God, I cannot talk. Now, God said, talk. You say, hey, God, send, uh, you know, send somebody else. God say, oh, no, Moses. Just imagine the mission Moses accomplished. Was it a small mission? It was so big. But what if he didn't take the step of faith to even start it? So fear has kept they say it's a snake, an English madam will tell you that a snake means a trap, a cage. Fear keeps us down, unable to talk, unable to take an action. He says, even a lazy man will say, I cannot go out to walk because there is a lion. I hear there is a lion on the street. That's what the lazy man will say. That he has not even seen the lion yet. But he will just tell you that I cannot do it because I hear that people who do these things never succeed. So fear gives you excuses even before. I cannot come out of this relationship because if I come out, there will be nobody to take care of me. I cannot do this career because there is no job for this career. You already give excuses in advance. You don't even take a step towards that direction. You just sit and analyze all the reasons why you will not work. That is the spirit of fear in action. But the spirit of fear goes out. If God blesses you and put your me in the midst of your enemy, what will you do? 
You need faith to go in the midst of your enemy to eat the blessings God has given you. If God says you will shine in a world that is dark, how do you expect that to happen if you are not walking in faith? If you are supposed to be surrounded by wicked people, how do you hope to succeed if you are walking in fear? Fear is our main problem. He says your faith doesn't need to be big, but he says there should be absence of unbelief. So, one of the ways that you express unbelief is by being afraid. You don't want to do anything, you're scared. It's a lazy man's own excuse. Imagine Samson, he saw a lion and he fought a lion. But the lazy man does not even see the lion. He stays in his house and says, There's a lion on the road, I'm not going out. Another one will say, Hey, the winter is not good, I cannot plant. And he says, When it's time of harvest, the man becomes very hungry. Because you give excuses, you become someone who procrastinates all the time. I will do it tomorrow. Why do you want to do it tomorrow? What happened today? You're always scared of, you really, God will put something so great in your heart and you sit and think about it. You say, no, or do it when conditions are good. Or do it when I have money. Or do it when, uh, I'll do it when you're just pushing it forward to a deal you don't know. But remember, God says, you and I will walk through the valley of the shadow of them. What is a shadow? Is it real? Is a shadow real? Is a shadow real? A shadow is not real. So fear is never real. If you are unable to take actions towards what God is calling you to do, it is difficult for you to make it even when everything God has given you is with you. Everything you need to make it is with you. But God's call for you is that take action. And you would ask me, how can I take action? The Bible says it's Naum, verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 4 or 5, it goes down. It says, the God who backs you is the God that when he stands, what happens? Let me read it for you. It says, the God who backs you is the God that uh, is Naum, chapter 1, verse uh, 4. It says, at the command of God, the oceans and the rivers, they dry up. Now, begin to understand the kind of God who is backing you. Because if you understand the power that backs you, you will not be afraid of your oppositions. He says, at God's command, the oceans dry up. There are some of us who cannot swim. Even the swimming pool that uh, ends us at our knee, we are scared to enter it. But at God's command, not the swimming pool, the oceans, the dry up. He says, the lush pastures of Basam and Kameh feed, and the green forest of Lebanon will wield. In his presence, the mountains quake, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles, and its people are destroyed. So you might be scared of a human being, but God says when he talks, even human beings are scared. So I don't know where your fear comes from. Is it coming from the weather? Is it coming from conditions of Mount Boya or how you call it? The Bible says, at his name, every creature and every creation would submit. So God is the one who is backing you up in that thing that he has called. And he expects you not to be afraid because God has promised that he will open all of you, your eyes, to greatness. But the problem is, what will you do when he opens it? Moses said he wanted to save the children of Israel. When God finally told him, okay, go and do it. I'm not saying you don't have... Everybody will have the ability to be a... Even Moses, at 40 or 80, whatever he was, he was scared. Moses was scared. Abraham, father of faith, had an element of unbelief in him. So it's not something that when it happens to you, you should feel like it's strange. No. But you should combat it with faith. Walk in faith, not in fear. If you want to be a world shaker, you want to be a world transformer, you must walk in faith. You have to be scared of nothing. You have to be in the process of continuous action. Always taking action, positive actions towards your career. Always, they say a leader is someone who always 
learns as if he has never known anything before. So you're always there to improve yourself constantly. You don't get tired. You really think the people you keep watching their series online that they produce it every day, do you think it's easy? I'm asking you, do you think it's easy? It's not easy. The phones we keep using every day that are bringing you innovations every day, do you think those people are sleeping? It's constant positive action that keeps them up there. So when God opens your eyes that, my son, I'm making the best carpenter to become in the world. Young man, what do you do? Get up and start walking. Even if it's not showing. Yesterday he came and met me and God opened his own eyes. He came and told me, Pastor, I started carpentry and I didn't compete. But I want to finish my carpentry. I said, wow, we gave me a carpentry workshop. So God answered somebody's prayer yesterday already. And we are looking forward to have a wonderful carpenter. So you have to take positive actions when God opens your eyes. Do you understand this? Constant positive action. Be afraid of nothing. Fear is a trap. Anytime you feel like fear is hitting you, please know that that is a trap stopping you from doing what God has called you to do. Fear will give you excuses. Anytime I had a teacher who was teaching me computer in those days, anytime I give him an excuse, he drives me out of his office. Anytime I come and give him an excuse, he drives me out of his office. He doesn't want to listen to any excuse whatsoever. Fear gives excuses. Faith sees opportunities. When people are complaining, you are doing things. When there is problem, people are complaining, faith is looking for solutions, fear is giving complaints. The war is that people are complaining, people who have faith, they are giving solutions. People who are lazy, they are giving excuses. It's the government, it's my father, it's bad roads, it's yam done, yam done, done. If it's bad roads, go and buy four by four. Fear gives what? Excuses. Faith gives solutions. You have to walk in faith, not fear. As God is opening your eyes, He's dropping. God can drop an idea in you, you just become numb. Because the idea was so big. You just become numb, you know? Just imagine if Joseph was afraid when the family started following him. He could give up so early. But you have to be so confident in what God gives you so that even everybody gives up on you. You are not giving up on yourself. It amazes you that you don't need all the musicians in this world to have a good music going on. Passenger. He goes around the world with his box guitar. That's all what he has. His box guitar. So even if people are giving up on you, you can be on one cool day that you see that God will drop an inspiration in your head. That will be dangerous. Because you didn't give up on yourself. Because you didn't see excuses. In your career, no excuses. Be scared of nobody. Be scared of no unforeseen circumstances. God is backing you. And at the name of God, every thought will confess that he is God. Let nothing in the form of fear Time down. And as you pray this day, I want you to pray that God, I want to be a man of faith and not fear. I want to be a woman of positive action and not excuses. I want to see solutions, not excuses. I want to see solutions. When there's a problem, I want to come up with what? A solution. I don't want to come up with an excuse. It's a gift from God. And as you ask Him this day, He will give it to you. As you ask God this day, He will lead the gift to you. All the people who did great things will not have faith. David will not lead Kita to a mad king if he was scared. No, he will not. 
Psalms will not kill a lion if he was scared. No, no, no. If we are afraid, we can do nothing. He says, your faith becomes active by putting it in action. Because faith without works is useless. I know, I know, I know has never changed anybody's life. How will It's what you do with what you know that is important. It's not that you know. It's not important to know and stay there. A woman of action, a man of action, constantly improving myself, constantly thinking of new ways to become better. Stand up to your feet. That is your prayer today. God, I want to be a man of faith. I want to be a woman of faith. I don't want to live by fear, but I want to be a person who lives by faith. Open your mouth, speak to God. No spirit of fear should be residing around your house, around your vicinity. You shouldn't be afraid of anybody. You should be high at all times. Nothing should scare you. Lack of money should not make you to become lazy. No job should not make you to become lazy. Economic crisis should not be an excuse for your life. No customers should not be an excuse for your life. You or yourself should be a constant active person. Not taking excuses from anybody. Even when people tell you some things are not working, you don't just have to accept it like that. Try things and make sure that you can do things. Mighty God, we pray to you this day, O oh God. That we want to be children of action. We want to be children of positive action. That you shall give us our spirit, O oh God, that we need to act in the right way. For you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of sound mind. You have given us a spirit of boldness. I pray that, O oh God, every child of God in this house shall remain bold in what you have called them to do. That they shall not be given excuses. But that God, they shall find solutions to problems. That they shall see opportunities, oh God, and not excuses. That God, they shall be bold enough, oh God, to take for what you have called them to do. That they shall speak before kings with no fear. They shall speak before the enemies with no fear. For you are a God that at your name, even people are destroyed. At your name, the devil bows. Therefore, no child of God in this house shall be scared, oh God. Of whatever forces that is opposing them, be it spiritual, be it physical. I pray that you shall cause us, O oh God, to walk in faith. To walk in faith. That as you open our eyes to the greatness you have put before us, none of us shall give up on the way. For you say we shall reap much if we do not faint. In our relationship, we shall not be bound by fear. In our careers, we shall not be bound by fear. In everything we do, we shall walk in faith. For we will not please you if we are not walking in faith. Even when everybody doesn't see anything working, you shall open our eyes to see something. For the reason they cannot see is because only one person has to see. And let that person be us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That when nobody is able to see something, we shall see. But when all the magicians failed, Joseph saw. When all of them failed, Daniel saw. We therefore pray that God, we shall not join the complainers. But we shall be distinct, O oh God. Children of faith, children of light. That will see opportunities even when there is no solution. In our jobs, in our schools, when everything comes to a standstill, let our voice bring a breakthrough. When nobody knows the way to go, let us be able to show the way. And God, we cannot accomplish this in fear. Only in faith. I pray against every spirit of unbelief. I call you unbelief by your name and say at the name of Jesus this day, bow in Jesus' name.